Okay, so get a little bit of insight into the AI ladder. Now we're going to switch, uh, switch topics, have another presenter come up. And, you know, our next speaker is really kind of a thought leader in terms of uh, data and data analytics. Um, so, and, and really a pioneer in data, uh, data management. Um, he's the co-founder and CEO of Impetus Technologies. Uh, to come and speak with us about the foundation for corporate success and the intelligent future, welcome Praveen Kanakara. Praveen, please. Thank you. Good morning. He missed saying one thing about my introduction, and that is, I am 118 years old. Seriously. That's the age a lot of marketeers around the world know for me. And who told them so? My favorite airline. You get it, right? And if you believe them, I'm the oldest living man, oldest living human on the planet. The next older is a year and a half younger. And who told this airline this age? Of course I. So it's an easy to remember date of birth. I didn't want to give them my true date of birth. I'm a bit of a privacy freak, so hey. There you go, they accepted the date of birth. And this was 20 some years ago when the website had first come up for the sale line. Fast forward, air travel become more secure, there are more restrictions, so I had to go and give my real date of birth to the check-in system of this airline. But they haven't correlated this discrepancy. And they keep perpetuating this myth that I'm 118 years old. For 20 years, I've been getting mailers from American Association of Retired Persons. <laughs> I keep getting offers for all kinds of Medicare Plus plans to enroll into, retirement homes, and I'm the butt of jokes at home. <clears throat> so I know I can pass this off as a joke, it's a trivial thing, as a consumer, I can say, you know, yeah, it's a big airline. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. But look from their perspective. It's an opportunity lost. And I know I'm just one of millions of flyers. But you, you extrapolate this across all the flyers. And I'm sure there are holes in everybody's profile. And there's, there are marketing dollars being misspent at a massive scale. So, I'm going to assert today that a unified, clear, and present view is an absolute necessity. Rob Bearden make, made the case for this. He also laid out a very nice architecture. And Rob Thomas also talked of, you have to have your information architecture right if you have to climb up the AI ladder. But I go around the country, my companies have a lot of Fortune 500 customers, and I see this view missing. And don't get me wrong, people have made strides in several areas, several pockets of enterprise data model have really advanced, come together. Uh, people are leveraging all kinds of machine learning applications, deep learning, what have you. But there are massive gaps still remaining, largely in mainstream enterprises. And, and this intelligent era is already here. These models are data beasts. They feed on data like, unlike ever before. The more granular the data, the better the outcomes. And I don't get it why is it taking this long for us to realize this. Now, I know we, we keep talking about, oh, you know, or we don't have enough people who know machine learning. I can tell you, in a 50-mile radius of where we are sitting, there are probably 100 companies 
who will send you all, who will sell you all kinds of algorithms. Data science workbenches, uh, all kinds of libraries and whatnot. But who's going to give you your own data? You have to really get your data act together. And I feel this is an opportunity, and if we don't treat it such, it's a massive threat. And the rate of disruption has gone up like crazy. I don't need to tell you. This is all over the news on a daily basis. Uh, the largest disruptors are expanding into areas, into newer areas every day. Search companies are trying to become automobile companies. Uh, there are new upstarts who have been born into this age of big data. They don't have this problem because their infrastructure is really modern. Look at the fear factor among mainstream enterprises. This is a recent survey conducted by uh, new Vantage partners. And the number of executives in very large companies, if you look at the list of companies, it's a who's who. The number of executives who are fearful of data-driven agile upstarts went up from nearly about 50% to 80% in just one year. Now, today's disruptors can become tomorrow's disrupted. There are no guarantees. If, if these disruptors also do not really make sure that their infrastructure is modern, their, their data infrastructure allows them to see a real-time, a real -time, full, comprehensive view of their enterprise at all times, uh, if they slip on that front, uh, they'll fall behind. And, and mainstream enterprises, you know, we, we, we tell them, we, we say that, oh, they're full of silos. It's like that airline. They have a marketing silo, which knows one date of birth for me. And then they have a check-in silo, whatever that business unit or department is. They have my true date of birth, which is daily on the wrong side of 50. So how did these silos come about? You know, I have a very simple explanation. I don't know right or wrong. Uh, decades ago, these business units, they got some transaction processing systems. And these transaction processing systems, can you go back, please? Uh, they got a little bit of analytics capability, glorified reporting. And that became a silo and worked well for them. It gave them the autonomy. There wasn't as much cross leverage working across different business units. Uh, and this is good. This is state of the art. But they did not keep it current. And here we are. We have now this ability to consume data at massive scale. We have cheap compute. We have cheap storage. Storage is getting cheaper by the day. And now suddenly, we've, these, you know, a lot of these mainstream enterprises find themselves not having unified their data. And I don't even imply how you unify your data, Do you, whether you create data gravity or you keep it where it is and you virtually integrate. I'm not recommending one way or the other. Whatever works. We just get, that's why I call it a unified view. So how do you get to this unified view? If you're a mainstream enterprise with dozens, if not hundreds, of these silos, there, you know, we've been into this big data revolution for, or this movement, if I may call it, for over a decade. There's a lot of architectural wisdom. There are architectural patterns to pick from. Uh, it's not in the scope of my conversation today. Uh, you can implement governance, security, as fine-grained security as you would like. Uh, <clears throat> but the biggest challenge I see is mainstream enterprises, they have those silos, dozens, hundreds, and they're already in motion. They have an operation to worry about. They're not an upstart who's architecting a business for the future. 
They have, these people have to keep the lights running. They have millions, if not billions, of customers. I've seen companies, they're handling billion unique users on their websites. There are such companies uh, I've run into. And how do they unify? Who's going to migrate? Yes, all the great architectural patterns are there, but who's going to really come and help them move lock, stock, and barrel to this new modern architecture? They have such massive investments. They have created thousands and thousands of workloads. I'm, I'm blown away when I run into and, and we do an assessment of uh, the number of workloads running on traditional legacy data warehouses. We run into thousands and each workload can have thousands of queries. And I've seen queries which are a single query which is four pages long when you printed it out. Who's going to sit and do this manual migration? It's massively disruptive, it's a long... So who, which executive is going to stick their neck out to cause this to happen? They all know the writing on the wall. The future is out here. Fortunately now, there are tools available which allow you to migrate these workloads, the logic in these workloads. There are tools that semantically extract the logic out and help you immediately port them over to modern data platforms like Hadoop. And, and what would have taken years with hundreds if not thousands of programmers can now be done in months. One other common problem I, I, I hear is, well, let's say if I were to, I, I create this view, but this view starts becoming obsolete immediately because parts of my business are shifting, moving, transforming, M&A happening. So I still have these long and expensive ETL cycles. So my view will again become obsolete. Well, I think, you know, if you look at what's really going on, we have really created massive number of productivity tools in our industry. You can create data pipelines visually now, and these pipelines can immediately be deployed on engines like Apache Spark at massive scale with elasticity. So what took months can now be done in days. Seriously, and I'm, I've seen this happen with several customers. Another major problem, major complaint I hear is, well, I brought all my data together. I've created this massive data lake or whatever people want to call it. But now my queries are not performing. There's one recent customer that I went uh, I went to, I visited, and, and they said, we're actually migrating data back from our Hadoop cluster, they have a 1900 node cluster, back to a legacy data warehouse for better consumption. And it's an operational nightmare, but we don't have a choice. We have users screaming and yelling. Well, as I said earlier, storage prices are falling, compute prices are falling. <clears throat> So we have to think differently. I've seen some smart companies create many different representations of the same data set. Uh, they'll create a graph copy of the same data set for better consumption by a certain class of queries or applications. Uh, some models like MOLAP for BI. BI is still the biggest use case for big data. I know it's not as sexy, but it is the largest use case. Uh, Molap was, had become unattractive in the, in the era of expensive storage. Not anymore. With cheap storage, why would you not pre-process everything? Why would you not make sure that you do as little work at query time? So you can support your human users very efficiently. And, and I, I love to keep telling our customers that I think there's only one resource which is getting more and more expensive with time, and that's the cost of human time. Cost of all your other resources are falling. So I'll end 
by again making a case that a unified view of our data is not an option. It is an opportunity. And if we don't address, it's a threat. I would like to believe that. I think companies who do not make rapid strides will miss out on creating a foundation for this intelligent era that's already here. And they'll lose out. Thank you.